Lord is good tonight. Our second evening, I know you're tired. I know some of you are homesick. And I need to use this microphone with a cover that looks like, you know, a shower cap for ladies, right? Did you notice that? <laughs> Vision. That's a big word. Uh, sometimes I've noticed that church leaders tend to focus on just one tense of vision, but vision has three tenses. Are you with me? Yeah. The word vision, of course, means sight. And when we talk about sight, first we look back to the past. It's called hindsight. In other words, we need to have a good understanding of what happened in the past. The second side of vision is insight. You look around and you're not satisfied with what you see right now. So hindsight and then insight. And the third component of vision is foresight, an ability to grasp what could be, which is future, right? So in your ministry, in your missionary work, don't just focus on foresight. Because if you do, you lose the other sights of vision. So there is hindsight, an understanding of what happened in the past, and there's insight, a dissatisfaction with what you see right now. You're not satisfied because you know that God can still do more. And then there is this foresight, a forecast of what could be in the future. Those three are very important for our ministry and for our missionary work. But tonight, I would like us to look at the entire chapter of Isaiah chapter 6. And as you have noticed, our theme for this entire consultation is renewing our vision for missions. Notice that I'm using the word missions with an S. And that means that we're really talking about our work in participation in God's work in this world. I'm going to differentiate those two words later, mission without S and missions with S. But take a look at Isaiah chapter 6. Shall we all rise, please, as we read this entire chapter together, please? Shall we all rise, please? <clears throat> Ready? Let's read it together. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord, high and exalted, seated on a throne, and the train of his robe filled the temple. Above him were seraphim, each with six wings. With two wings they covered their faces, with two they covered their feet, and with two they were flying. And they were calling to one another, Holy, 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 is the Lord Almighty. The whole earth is full of his glory. And at the sound of their voices, the doorposts and thresholds shook, and the temple was filled with smoke. Woe to me, I cried. I am ruined, for I am a man of unclean lips, and I live among a people of unclean lips. And my eyes have seen the King, the Lord Almighty. Then one of the seraphim flew to me with a live coal in his hand, which he had taken with tongs from the altar. With it, he touched my mouth and said, See, this has touched your lips. Your guilt is taken away and your sin atoned for. Then I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send and who will go for us? And I said, Here am I, send me. And he said, Go and tell these people, be ever hearing, but never understanding, be ever seeing, but never perceiving. Make the heart of these people calloused, make their ears dull, and close their eyes. Otherwise, they might see with their eyes, hear with their ears, understand with their hearts, and turn and be healed. Then I said, For how long, Lord? And he answered, until the cities lie ruined, 
and without inhabitant until the houses are left deserted and the fields ruined and ravaged, until the Lord has sent everyone far away and the land is utterly forsaken, and though a tent remains in the land, it will again be laid waste. But as the terebent and oak leave stumps when they are cut down, so the holy seed will be the stump in the land. Our Father in heaven, we pray that you open our minds and transform our hearts <clears throat> so we can receive your message and that in our brokenness we can be healed and that we can renew our vision for the task that you have given to each of us. We love you and we surrender everything to you. We ask all these things in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit and all God's people said, Amen. Amen. You may be seated, please. <clears throat> We all know that for every declarative statement or sentence, there is a question behind it, right? And so our statement is renewing our vision for missions. And the question behind it, of course, is very easy, right? How do we renew our vision for missions? And so that's our message today. And I have intentionally use this message, message or passage because the content of this message actually is written in your hands, all right? I want you to look at your hands for a moment, please. You see, I have, a beautiful, I have beautiful hands, okay? Show me your hands, please. Show me your hands, yeah. Now, some of you have already um, experienced this practice, right, this drill. So show me your hands and then look at your hands. First, the right hand first. What do you see in your right hand? What letter do you see? What letter do you see? Look at your hand. Don't look at my face, OK? <laughs> in English letter. M, that's right, Dr. Reggie. M, right? And so let's do it this way. For us to renew our vision, we need to recapture the vision of God's majesty. That's the first M, the majesty of God. Amen? Amen? And so this is exactly a very beautiful story because Isaiah was actually in a worship experience. And then in his worship experience, he saw the Lord, right? He saw the Lord full of glory in his majesty. Now, we know that in the scripture, when we talk about the majesty of God, we're talking about that which God differentiates us and himself. So majesty means God is not us, human beings, and human beings can never be God, right? That's majesty. So majesty actually means that God has made a differentiation between himself and his entire creation, including human beings. Because he's holy. Because we talk about his glory. And we, we sang a while ago about this glory of God, right? Can you imagine when the glory of God fills this room? You know what we will be feeling? Something will happen to us. Why? Because when the majesty of God falls on us, when the glory of God falls on us, the darkest chambers of our hearts can be exposed. No wonder Isaiah saw himself in the midst of God's majesty. And he said, woe unto me, I am a man of unclean lips. You see, it is majesty that actually tells us who we are. That in the darkest moment of our lives, God is there as light. Amen? Amen? And so in our vision for the task that God has given us, it's important for us to refocus on this majesty of God. And that in the pains and sufferings and hardships and trials that we go through as missionaries of God, as leaders of God, we need to remember that this majesty keep us alive. Amen? And it is, it's very powerful a while ago, you know, listening and watching some of your uh, photos here. 
And I, I was sitting there beside my wife, and I told myself, wow, these leaders have suffered so much. And I could really identify with you. My wife and I were tribal missionaries for quite some time in northern Philippines. And these tribes are called Igorots. And uh, we, we went through a lot. And uh, thankfully, I was still young at the time. And so, you know, when you're young, you're very adventurous, right? But can you imagine if I'm, you know, if I become a tribal missionary at my age right now, you know how old I am? Okay, I don't need to tell you, okay. <laughs> but what I'm trying to say here is this. Missionary work is not easy. And missionary calling is not a package. In other words, when you receive this calling from God, it doesn't mean that that calling will carry you through from day one all to 30 years or 50 years of your work. No, you have to refresh that calling day by day. You have to renew that calling day by day. It is not a package. It is something that we need to renew every moment and every single day in our lives. Our missionary calling is just like marriage. You get up in the morning, you look at your spouse, and you said, uh-oh, I can see white hair. And just imagine my wife looking at me and saying, uh-oh, no hair, it's just air, okay? Instead of hair, it's air, right? Things change. Calling is like that. Because calling is actually real in our lives. And we know that as we get older in our ministry, as we get older in our missionary work, we know that the challenges of life can actually bear us down. And sometimes some of us probably would be tempted to quit. But it is the majesty of God that keeps us going. It is the majesty of God that actually exposes all the darkness we have in this life. And so in the midst of our darkness, in the midst of our pains, the majesty of God becomes more clear. The brightness of God's holiness gets clearer every day. But you see, it's not just majesty that we need to recapture in terms of our vision. It's also the mercy of God. Take a look at your left hand. All right? The right hand is majesty. Say it with me, please. Majesty. Again. Majesty. And then left hand, mercy. One more time. Majesty. Mercy. So if you take a look at mercy, you will find that this is exactly what Isaiah had experienced. You notice he said, woe in verse 6, woe unto me, I am a man of unclean lips. You'll find it in verse 4 down to verse 7. I am a man of unclean lips. And then God has sent what? And who? Who did God send? A seraphim, right? A seraphim touching his lips. And then he became what? He became pure or holy in the eyes of God. That's the mercy of God. Because the majesty of God sends his mercy to people. So you see, majesty differentiates God from creation and from us as human beings. But mercy relates God to us in a very personal way. We cannot touch God's majesty because in Moses' time, if you touch God's majesty, you die, right? But we can embrace his mercy. Amen? Amen? So we need to remind ourselves that the vision that we have, the task that we have, is actually a task of mercy. No wonder Jesus, before he ascended to heaven, what did he say? He said, that repentance for the forgiveness of sins will be preached in all nations. And then he said, go into all the world and take selfies of all nations. No, don't change the scripture. He, Jesus did not say that, okay? Jesus said, and preach the good news to all nations. I have seen many of these seminaries and, uh, I mean, missionaries, <coughs> going places to places, 
and they just love to take selfies of all nations, right? Now, every year I take students to different continents. And believe me, sometimes I'm annoyed because many of them are young, and the moment they touch down at an airport, the first thing that they will do is, all right, professor here, you know, take selfies. I said, come on, we're not here for that. We are here to share the good news, to share the mercy that we have, because that mercy should not be kept to ourselves. That mercy should be shared. Amen? Amen. But you see, Isaiah saw this mercy, and Isaiah embraced this mercy, and he received this mercy in his life. So at a time when you get so tired, at a time when you get so exhausted in your missionary work, remember this mercy. And I, if you remember the old hymn, Great is Thy Faithfulness, you remember that song? Yes. You remember one of the lines actually is very important. It says, new mercies I see. Great is thy faithfulness. Morning by morning, new mercies I see. Remember your calling, as I said a while ago, is not a package. It has to be renewed every moment. And it is the mercy of God that renews that calling. Amen? When you are about to give up, because of hardships, when you're about to make a turn away from the task that you have received from God, remember mercy and majesty. But there is another M. And so let's go back to your right hand. Remember the first M? Majesty. And then the second is? Mercy. And then the, fourth, uh, the third is? Missions. Now, I use the word missions here because the word mission is not in the scripture, right? And so, when we normally in missiology, when we use the word mission without S, it refers to the missio day, right? And so, when we use the word missions with S, it refers to the embodiment of mission or missio day in our lives as God's people. So, in other words, if mission without S is God's work, in this world, redemptive work and reconciling work in this world, missions is the church's participation in that mission, right? So just, just to make sure that we are clear on this. And so Isaiah heard this question, whom shall I send? Now that he has a glimpse of God's majesty, now that he has embraced the mercy of God, he heard God's voice, whom shall I I send. And can you imagine Isaiah's response? He turned around and he saw his wife and he said, Lord, send my wife, send her. No, it's not in the story, okay? Don't add to the Bible, okay? Yeah. Isaiah said what? Here am I, send me. You remember the first time that you said that to God? You remember the first time, maybe years back, when you said, Lord, here am I, send me that should be renewed at this moment that should be renewed moment by moment and daily in your life and in my life our missions should always be renewed in other words we need to renew our calling for missions because god has a task for you and god has a task for me now, missions is not easy. Mission can be joyful. It can also be painful. Amen? It can be joyful, but also painful. Missions can be hard, but it can be rewarding. Missions can be exciting, but it can be tiring. I can see many of our faiths here so tired. Why? Because we're in this work that God has given us. And sometimes we talk about burnout. I think I heard that yesterday, right? You know, burnout, I think that was uh, mentioned a while, uh, yesterday. But you see, sometimes 
in my observation, most leaders actually are not into burnout stage. They're just exhausted. They're just tired physically. You see the difference between burnout and exhaustion? If you say you're exhausted, it means your body says you're tired. And you listen to your body, you sleep, you eat, you drink, you do exercise, and then you overcome this exhaustion, right? But if you say, I'm burnt out, it actually means that you have lost, listen carefully, you have lost the meaning of what you are doing. Amen? In other words, you have been trying to be faithful to God, and you have lost the meaning of what you are doing. So in my case, I have been exhausted so many times. But burnout, no. Why? Because even in my exhaustion, I have not lost the meaning of what I do. Amen? I, I, I was listening to Timothy a while ago, and I knew, you know, the, you remember the tire that he made out of hay? Well, that was so genius, right, Timothy? Uh, you should apply at uh, Kia and, you know, and uh, Hyundai uh, car company. And <laughs> that's genius. But you remember when I asked him about, okay, what is the, uh, what is the most joyful part of this uh, journey that you have? And, and, and she said, you know, hardships, right? Was he lying to us? No. It means that he gets tired. He gets exhausted physically, mentally, emotionally. And yet, he has not lost the meaning of what he's doing. So you can be exhausted, but not necessarily burned out. I know this by experience. When I was here in Korea, uh, serving as a missionary educator here, I, um, I was a pastor in Chungmuro uh, Church. My wife and I, you know, uh, planted a church in Chungmuro with uh, Seoul Baptist Church in Chungmuro. That was afternoon. And then I was a pastor at Sejung Ang uh, Presbyterian Church in Indogon in the morning. So for more than eight years, I was a pastor at a Presbyterian Church in the morning. So I was Presbyterian in the morning. And then I would go to Chungmuro and I was a Baptist in the afternoon. Hello? You just imagine how happy the Baptist uh, ministry was. Why? Because I would practice my sermon at the Presbyterian <laughs> and then <laughs> preach the same sermon in the afternoon. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> For more than eight years. But I was a pastor of two churches and I was a full time professor. So, in other words, I was at Heppel Trinity from Monday through Friday. I was a full-time professor. And then, because I also used to be the dean of an Asian network, I would actually travel 10, 12 countries every year. Was I burned out? No. Was I exhausted? Yes. I remember my wife telling me one day, thank you for being here in the house, although you were not here. You know what I'm saying? You're there, but not there. <laughs> Just exhaustion. But why is, it, why is it that even though my body was so tired, why is it that every Sunday morning I still get, uh, get up from bed? Why? Because I have not lost the meaning of what I do. And that is exactly what you have in your life. As long as you have not lost the meaning and sense of what you do, you're okay. Because it is the majesty and the mercy of God that carry you through. Amen? Amen. What's the first? It's majesty. Say it with me, please. Majesty. What's the second? Mercy. What's the third? Missions. And then the fourth is message. The fourth is message. So majesty... Mercy, missions, and then we have the message. And we will find it in verse 9 down to verse 13. That's the message that Isaiah is supposed to take to the nations. In fact, if you read it again, it is a very difficult message. 
God is actually telling Isaiah, go to the nations and proclaim this message. But that message is very powerful. It's very powerful. The summary of that message actually is in verse 13. And it actually talks about the remnant of Israel using a metaphor of the holy seed of God. That even though Israel will disobey, not all Israelites would disobey God. Some of these Jews would still recognize grace in their lives. And then they will fulfill the missionary task that they receive from God. Because Israel was called to be what? Light to the nations, right? They knew that task. But not many would obey. But some would remain obedient. Amen? We have a message to carry. We have a message to tell. That's the reason why we are still here, even though we are tired physically. That's the reason why we get up in the morning, although our feet says, stay in bed, right? That's the reason why we go to the mountains, although our bodies say, don't. That's the reason why we drive our cars and visit homes and share the good news of salvation in Jesus Christ, even though our minds say, don't go. Why? Because we have a message to proclaim. Amen? And that's a powerful message. That's a powerful message. And for you to understand the power of this message, you have to go to Acts chapter 28. Did you see that one? This is the time when Paul was in prison in Rome. And you just imagine that Paul had gone through all these hardships in his missionary life, right? He planted around like 14 churches in his entire ministry and probably more but we can only identify 14 of uh, those. And then he covered a lot of lands, a lot of highways, a lot of space in his life. He was tired. Was he burned out? No. Why? Because of the message that he received from Christ. In fact, when he wrote the first chapter of Romans, you remember what he said about the power of the gospel? I'm not ashamed, right? That's right. And I'm in, uh, I, I am in debt to both Jews and the Greek because the gospel is power. That's what he said. That's the message we have. We're not talking about a story of a child who simply grew up in Galilee. We are talking about the story of this child who grew up in Galilee and one day he was crucified for the sins of the world and then on the third day he rose again so that all of us will live for eternity. Amen? Amen. That's the message we have. So let's do it one more time. Say it with me please. Majesty. Majesty. Mercy. And put your both hands together. Missions. 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 And then open your hands. Message. 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 The Lord bless you and keep you.